Welcome to Electron Online, and here's our 12th example of how to apply Newton's laws to problems like this. Here we have a very interesting problem. We have kind of like an outward machine. We have a pulley hanging from a ceiling. We throw a rope around it. On one end, the rope is attached to a box with a person in it. And then on the other end, the rope is free hanging. The person grabs the rope and then, for part A, just tries to hold everything in place. Um, how much force does that require? Of course, that would be a force in a downward uh, direction. Uh, what if the box, what if the person wants to raise the box up at a constant velocity? How much force does that take? What if the person wants to let the box down at constant velocity? How much force does that take? And finally, what if the person wants to accelerate the box upward at one meters per second squared? How much force? And what's really interesting about this problem is you look at it and you go, well, wait a minute. If the person has a weight of 50 kilograms and the box has a, uh, I should say, a mass, not a weight, a mass of 25 kilograms, how can the person apply enough force on the rope to lift the box up? Because if the person applies a force equal to the person's weight and then tries to apply more force, the person would simply lift him or herself off the floor of the box. So that doesn't seem to work out really well. But actually, there's something very interesting about a pulley system like that. It turns out that this string right here holds the tension, or the tension in that string is equal to the weight of the entire system. Now, if we assume that the pulley and the rope does not have a mass, then the tension, and let's call this M1 and M2, then the tension is going to be the total mass M1 plus M2 times acceleration due to gravity. That's the only string that holds up the entire weight. Then if you look at the tensions here, the way this is being subdivided, these two tensions and these strings together, actually it's the same string, pull, you know, put over a pulley, the sum of these two will equal this one right here. So that means that this is half the tension experienced over there, and this is half the tension experienced over there. Again, assuming that this is static, not moving, we're doing part A. And so therefore, the force required to hold everything in place is only half the weight of the box and the person combined. And so that's why it's actually possible. So therefore, the force must equal the tension in the string, which is tension over 2, which is equal to 1 half times the total mass, which is m1 plus m2 times acceleration due to gravity. So this is equal to 1 half times the mass 1 is 25 kilograms, mass 2 is 50 kilograms times g. All right, so we have 75 times 9.8 divided by 2 equals, so it takes a force of 368 newtons. Now, notice, what is the weight of the person? The weight of the person, which is equal to m2g, is equal to 50 kilograms times 9.8. And so 50 times 9.8 equals is equal to 490 newtons. So notice that the person can actually pull with a force of 490 newtons before the person will actually leave the floor of the box. So that seems possible. That's less on the weight of the person. The person could hold things in place by hanging onto the rope. Now what happens when we do part B? So this is part A. What happens when we do part B? Now the box needs to be moving upward at a constant speed. Now it turns out if there's no acceleration, that means there's no extra force required. So that turns out that for part B, the force would be exactly the same. So for part B, the force also would be 368 newtons. And that means then if the person wants to let the box downward at a constant speed without acceleration, that for part C, the force is going to be also 368 newtons. So that means that the person can hold the box in place, can pull on the box and raise the box upward, at a constant speed, or can let go of the rope and allow the box to go down at a constant speed. But what if now the person wants to accelerate the box at an acceleration of one meter per second squared? Now the person needs additional force, force that is needed to accelerate the whole system upward. So in part D, uh, that means the force required is going to be equal to the force needed to hold it in place, the 368 newtons, plus the force required to accelerate it. So plus the m1 plus m2 times the acceleration. And notice that it, the person has to pull enough with enough force to accelerate the whole system. All right, so this is equal to 368 newtons 
plus, uh, that's 25 kilograms plus 50 kilograms times one. And so that would be equal to 368 newtons plus an additional 75 newtons. And so that would be equal to, let's see here, it looks like 443 newtons, which is still less than the weight of the person. So that should theoretically be possible as well. Now, what if the box had more mass? Now we would have a problem. So let's say that the box had a mass of 50 kilograms and the person's trying to accelerate it upward. The person would no longer be able to apply enough force because at that point, the person would actually lift him or herself off the floor. And at that point, you would not be able to, again, lift the box any higher than that. So that wouldn't work very well. But in this particular case, the person is able to actually pull the box and him or herself upward by simply pulling on a rope. It's a, kind of an ingenious system. At first sight, it doesn't look like that's even possible.